we had about 80 some last week and it looks like we probably don't have as many this week but I can't put it off anymore I want to I want to bring this word forth because it's such a now word it is such a timely word and so I want to I want to uh, read what he had said uh, for us hallelujah praise God First, he wanted to, obviously, he started off with his Merry Christmas because, again, we thought that's what this was going to be for. We miss all of you very much, and we continue to thank our Heavenly Father for the honor and privilege that he extended to us for so many years. To plant and lead this awesome church, you are a joy to my heart, and we are so proud of your pastors, Bill and Damaris, your Lynn, your elders, your deacons, and every faithful member of the congregation. God bless you all. In recent weeks and months, I have been studying the bridal program. This is a short study, but an important message in God's word for his church in this hour. It was Pastor Mike Beckel from the International House of Prayer in Kansas City who opened this part of scripture and brought me into this heretofore unknown area of truth. If you're in Matthew 9, uh, please say amen. We're going to start in verse 14. Uh, Pastor had asked to read both of these scriptures, and so we're going to read 9, past, uh, 914. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Then John's disciples came and asked him, How is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. Then if you can please come with me to Matthew 25, starting at verse 1. Hallelujah. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. I'm reading from the NIV, uh, just so you know. Verse 2, five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they... They cry, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, they may not be enough for both of us, and you instead go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived, the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Hallelujah. It was Jesus himself who gave us the basis of this message in Matthew 9, 14, 15, and Matthew 25, 1 through 13, the parable of the ten virgins. Each had a lamp representing their individual ministries. Some had oil, a reference to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and some went about their ministries without oil, no anointing. They just went through the motions of serving God, but with little or no close relationship to him. They depended on others to do their praying and the Bible study for them. Verse 8, give us some of your oil. They said, your anointing, uh, they said, uh, they said, I'm sorry, they said, give us some of your oil, they said, your anointing, your close walk with God, your prayer life, because our ministries have dried up. You prayed a lot and fasted, and, and God gave you an abundance of his life and power, but we didn't have time to pray or time to study the word. We were just too busy, so you help us. Now, beloved, we are going to see more and more churches and ministries closing down and going out of business because they have played church and catered to the wants of the people but have not sought God for his life and daily anointing. Now, in this paradigm, Jesus declared himself to be the bridegroom, the Messiah, and he referred to the true church. You and I, who believe the gospel and take time to be with Jesus as the bride of Christ, he said, I am coming back soon. Jesus linked this bridal paradigm very closely to the parable of the ten virgins. Later in Revelations 12, 17, Jesus said that just before he returns, the true bride of Christ will cry out, Jesus, come. 
In a coming time of great persecution against Christianity and the church, we will begin to cry out more and more, come Lord Jesus. It will be a sign of the times we are living in. But in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 16, the bridal paradigm will arrest our attention and focus our prayers on Jesus. So the paradigm is an invitation to intimacy with God. It is a call to the church to experience his emotions. It is a call to the deep things of God, to those, who, to those of us whom he belongs to reveal his heart to. It is called a position of privilege. The angels will never experience these things that we have access to. The angels will never call God Father, and no angel will, will call Jesus Lord or be part of the bride of Christ. They can only come so close to him, but I have asked to be permitted to kiss the bottoms of his feet. Only we, the church, can come that close to God. Only man, through the gospel, can come from earth into heaven. Oh, yes, the angels do desire to look into the gospel and our relationship with God. Peter 1, 12 through 13 tells us that. But they will never experience him as we can. Intimacy with God is not available to angels. But it is available to us right now if we want it. Do you? Or are you just too busy? Take advantage of every prayer meeting and every opportunity to read God's word. Your preparations started the day you were born again. So how far have you come? How close are you to Jesus now? Closer than a month ago? Closer than a year ago? When no one is watching, are you living a holy life? The call of the Holy Spirit today is to come out of the darkness and to get the darkness out of you with repentance. It is now or never. There is little time to start praying and fasting. If not now, when? Come out of Babylon, my people. Run into the light now. Oh, so many of God's people are not ready. The oil is low or totally gone. Give us some of your oil, cried Matthew 25, 8 and 25, 8. Our lamps have gone out, but the wise said no. Was that a cruel answer? No, because no one can give you some of their anointing. Only God can give you the, the oil of the Holy Spirit. It is an individual transaction between you and Jesus. You have to get it for yourself. He requires your time in the word. He requires your regular prayer life. He requires your time in fasting. So don't try in your own strength to satisfy the itch in your spirit or scratch in your soul. Only God. This message is from Pastor Knapp. It's, uh, it's so important, and I just want to point out a few of the points that he brings out here this morning. He talks, uh, he's talking about the, the, that this is, this is the time. This is the time for the, the word of, for the church. I mean, this is a now word, as I said earlier. This is definitely something that the church needs to hear. And when, when, I, when I was reading this, I said, you know, I don't know why, but I just feel like we picked this day for this to, to say this ahead of time. And I just feel in the spirit that this is the time that this word needs to come. The relationship between Christ and his bride. Our pastor, or our bishop actually, excuse me, bishop, uh, admonishes us to learn the things that are unknown in the areas of truth. This means the in-depth study of the word. He uh, reads the passage of scripture relating to the parable of the ten virgins to learn that each lamp represents a ministry and to bring awareness that some oil, a reference to the anointing of the Holy Spirit and some about what your ministries uh, about some of the oils that are in uh, ministries. See, he's telling us that the, minist the oil that we have in ministries, I, first I just want to emphasize this. How many of you know each one of you are a ministry? You're all ministries unto the Lord. Wherever you go, you're a ministry. When, you, when you're born again, you are a ministry, and you have oil, you have anointing, you have the power, the, the abilities that the Holy Spirit has given you. You have that, and that's an oil. But that oil, for some people runs out. They need an oil change. <laughs> you know what happens when the oil runs out of a car? The engine seizes up, right? Everybody knows what that means? The, the motor stops because it gets so hot and the, the pistons expand in the, in the motor and it stops. And there's nothing more it can do. It can go for a little while without oil, but then it runs out. It needs more oil. And that's, that's the same with us. As ministers of the Lord, we need that oil to continue. And if you continue in it, God will anoint whatever you're doing. God will anoint that when you're doing the things of the Lord and your oil gets filled and it gets filled again and it gets filled again and every day it gets filled. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. He says to bring awareness that some of us just go through the motions. Um, we don't do what's necessary in order to keep our oil, oil levels high. And so some depend on others to do their praying. They depend on others to do their Bible studies. You know, they don't want to take the time and sit and do it themselves, so they rely on others that are around them to do it. We can't do that. That's, that doesn't work. You know, when I need prayer, there are people that when I need prayer, I'll go to, I'll go to somebody else. When I need healing, I'll go to somebody else. When I, uh, when, I, when I need to understand something and studying, you know, I'll let them take care of that. When I need to see uh, when God is talking to me, I'll just talk to somebody else about it, and they can tell me what God is saying. I don't have to go and do that. I'll use them to get me into the kingdom of God. That's what they're saying in essence is that, oh, I'll just talk to this one and I'll get this one to pray for me. Oh, I go to church. Yeah, but are you, are you reading your word? Are you studying? Are you getting filled? You know, and this is what pastor's trying to bring to our attention, to get close with God. Yeah. And so he's saying, review your anointing. Review your close walk with God, your prayers, your life. Check your ministries. Get an oil change or or else your motor is going to seize up. To find out why we don't have time, you know, find out why you don't have time to pray. A lot of times it's the things that we're doing in life, you know. We're watching too much TV. We're doing too much Facebook. We're taking pictures of our food and sending it to other people, you know, so that they can see what we ate the night before. That's not going to help your ministry. It's not going to help. See, these are the, when you fill your life up with little things like that, well, just what? If you take those little things out of your life and put things of the Lord into those things and fill those spots up with that, backfill it with the things of the Lord, you'll see the anointing come back. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 through 16 says, It is a call to the deep things of God, to those of us who long to reveal his heart. It is a call to the position of privilege. And he talked about the position of privilege. The angels don't even have the privileges that we have. We, it is so awesome that God created us to be who we are because we get to, when we get to go to heaven, like, past, uh, past, uh, like Bishop said, he wants to kiss the feet of Jesus. He says, I really want to kiss the feet of Jesus. He says, and we can get that close to him. Imagine Imagine getting that close to God. We're able to do that. Why? Because that's why God created us. He wanted us to be so we could fellowship with him, so we could praise him and worship, with, and worship him. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The person without the Spirit, without the Spirit, does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. You know, the Spirit of God, when people come into the house and sometimes they'll sit there and they'll say, uh, you know, we'll be doing praise and worship and they won't understand like we do. They'll just kind of sit there and just say, oh yeah, uh, is it, does it really got to go that long? You know, is he really going to talk this long? What's going, why is this? You see, when, you're, when you love the Lord, you want praise and worship. You want to hear the word. You want to learn, you want to understand, you want to see what God is doing. It gets you excited, it gets you excited. You know, and that's, that's, that's what Pastor, that's what uh, Bishop is talking about right here. Getting close, it's like the, the bridal, the, 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 um, the bridal marriage. You know, when you have a wife, when you first met, remember when you first met, you wanted, her, you wanted everything to know about her. You wanted to do whatever pleased her, you know, take her wherever she wanted to go. You know, you loved her, you honored her, you know, you, you kind of put her up on a pedestal, you know. What I, that's what God is doing with us. That's the relationship he wants with us. He wants this bridal ceremony between us. It's not, the, it's not you know, some people look at that and they say, oh, well, the, the bride, well, the, the girl, you know, a bride, you know, and I'm a guy, how can I be a bride, you know. That's not what he's saying. But so many people look at it that way, and so they reject that. A lot of people will reject it because of that, because it says, you know, I'm not, I'm not a bride of Christ. You know, you know, a lot of men will think that way. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the relationship. There is not a relationship that you can think of in any other area other than the marriage relationship that shows the intimacy, the intimacy that God wants with us. Amen. Praise God. Take advantage of every prayer meeting, every opportunity to read God's word. These bring you close to God. You always want to learn more about him. You always want to be as close to God as you can. The call of the Holy Spirit today is to come out of the darkness now, he had mentioned. To get out of darkness, to get the, get, to get the darkness out of us, to, to come into repentance. Sometimes there's darkness in us that we may not even realize. You know, like, look at... There's, You'll know them by their fruit. 
What does your fruit look like? Sometimes we just need to look at our own fruit. What is it that we're doing? Are we doing what pleases God? Am I doing the right thing? Uh, am I making the right business decision? Uh, you know, what is it that you're doing? Is it the right thing to do or are you taking a bribe behind the back? You know, or, or, or somebody's kind of, you know, saying, hey, listen, if you do this job for me, I'll give you, you know, 100 bucks to do that, you know, but, um, but don't tell anybody, you know, they, they can't know about. It, it, what's going on? That's fruit, you know. But it's not good fruit. It's bad fruit. And this is what he's talking about. It's those little foxes that get us. Because those little foxes lead to bigger foxes. Only God can give us the oil of the Holy Spirit. Only God can give us the, holy, the, the oil of the Holy Spirit that he had mentioned. You know, when God gives us, he, he is the one that gives us uh, oil. But there are some things that we have to do to get that oil as well. Sometimes we just think God gives it and we don't have to do anything for it. But if you don't receive it or you don't use it, then what point is it? He's, he's not going to give it to you if you're not willing to use it. And so he's required for us to do some things. And, and, and Bishop uh, mentions those. He requires your time in the Word. He wants to see you reading your Word. Because the more you know about the Word, the more you can discern. How are you going to know if something bad is coming against you if you don't even know if it's bad? But if you're reading the Word, you'll know. You'll know. When you, when you know your Word, you'll know when something comes at you that's not supposed to be. No matter how good it looks. Oh, don't go witness to that person because, uh, you know, he's, he's not ready. And if you witness to him, there's going to be backlash and all of this other kind of stuff. You know, so don't go to that person. Do you think that's Jesus that's saying? Do you think that's coming from the Lord? But people will say, oh, okay, then I won't go touch him. You see, the devil works in the small things that we don't understand. But if you know the word, say, wait, wait a minute. My word tells me no matter what comes against somebody that you have the authority to go after that. So we have to, re we have to realize who we are in Christ. And, sometimes, and, and if we're not reading the word, we're not going to know that. He requires us to go in and have a regular prayer life, a regular prayer life. That is the hardest thing for so many people to do is to go and pray. But that's what God requires of us. And why not? Because prayer is the most intimate you can get with God. You can tell God anything you want, anything you want, just like in a marriage, right? You can tell your wife anything you want. And God is the same way. That's the kind of relationship we're talking about. He requires your regular prayer life. He requires your time in fasting. You know, when you're fasting for the Lord, that's a sacrifice that you're doing unto Him. Fasting is something that, and it doesn't have to be food. It can be, it can be food. It can be water. It can be, uh, it can be TV. It can be, it can be a lot of different things. As a matter of fact, um, uh, the way I believe I weaned myself off of TV years ago was by watching less and less of it. As a matter of fact, I remember every year we used to take uh, the whole in month of January watch no TV. Well, actually we watched TV, but we were let, only watch Christian movies. And then we said, okay, now we're not even going to watch it. And now today we don't even watch TV. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's fasting that, that brought me to that point. It gives me more time with the Lord. Hallelujah. And he requires your time in fasting. So the paradigm is an invitation to intimacy with God. It's a call to the church to experience his emotions, to focus on prayer uh, and, and prayer with him. Hallelujah. And so I just want to say, please heed the words of our bishop. Uh, he's, uh, I, he's dead on what he's saying right here. You know what the church, you know what, you know what the world is trying to do right now? The world is trying to, it's... It, it's not that the world is going out there. It's not like the devil comes in and does something that's so obvious to everybody, like, you know, to try to shut a church down or, you know, an organization come in and take us out or anything like you know what the, you know what the, You know what the devil's doing? He's getting the people to turn on themselves, getting the church to turn on itself. If he can get the church to turn on itself, then he doesn't have to do anything. It will literally disintegrate right before his eyes. And how does he do that? He could do that with division, just what's going on with, with, with um, you know, vaccinated and non-vaccinated. I don't care if you're vaccinated. I don't care if you're non-vaccinated. We're covered in the blood of Jesus. But you see what the world is doing? Is we, got a, a, we have this, and you have this right within the church. You see what the devil is doing? He's turning everyone on themselves. That's how he's going to destroy it. That's how he's going to try to destroy the church. But the churches that have the Holy Spirit, that know the word of God, that stay in prayer, that read their words, that know who the Lord is in their life, 
They will not be deceived. They will not be deceived. They could be deceived if it were possible, but the word says if it were possible, which means it's not possible. If you are in your word and you are praying and you know Jesus in your heart, if you have that intimacy with God, you will not be deceived. Amen? So praise God. So I just want to thank uh, everyone for uh, coming out this, uh, this morning. It's a... Uh... We have one more thing. Oh, go ahead. When you're done. Okay, praise God. Uh, so uh, that's, all, that's all I have. I just want to say, you know, that uh, the pastor had a timely word. He's very concerned. He loves us. We, we speak with him uh, every week. Um, and uh, he's always asking about everybody and how everyone is doing. And, you know, he's, his heart is here. He might not be physically here, but his heart is here. His spirit is here. And uh, I just, uh, you know, just wanted to relay that word to him. That was what was on his heart. Amen. So thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for that word. It's just so awesome when we can hear from our bishop a special word that had been burning in his heart. He wanted us to share it at Christmas time, but we weren't here uh, for that Christmas Eve service. But he did send us also that word, which is an awesome word, all about the intimacy of Christ and uh, in our lives together. Make sure that this year you make time for intimacy, like Pastor said. But one of the things that also Bishop sent us was some photos of him that we were supposed to show at Christmas time. So I still want to show you his photos. So here they go. <laughs> Bishop and his family and even the little dog was there. So uh, Merry Christmas everyone. Before, uh, as we have our uh, band come up to the front, I did want to point out some guests that we had here. Remember that family that I told you about that came here out of the street into here into the prayer of God? They're here today. Ortiz family, thank you and welcome again. Make sure that you meet with our youth pastor AJ. AJ, come and raise your hand over there. Oh, there he goes. Make sure you see AJ before you go. Thank you for coming again. Amen. God bless you. And here's the band. Yes, oh, and I just coming. want to say uh, also that uh, I know we were supposed to take a, a building fund offering this morning, but we're going to put that off till next week, okay? Uh, so we'll, we'll, we, we, won't, uh, we won't do that now. But um, I just want to say that as the, as the band's coming back, uh, if there's anybody here that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I always want to make this altar call. Uh, I'll be very abbreviated, but if you, if, if you don't know the Lord Jesus in your life and you want to be born again and you want to experience the anointing and have the oil that we have knowing the Lord, especially at this time, in this hour, it is so crucial for us. You don't know when you walk out that door if Jesus is coming. He could be coming any minute now. He could be coming any second now. And you don't want to miss that ride. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus, I just ask you, just come up to the front and, and, and I'll have someone pray over you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Um, be bold. Jesus is bold for us. We need to be bold for him. Um, and so if, and if there's any prayer that you, that you want, maybe if uh, your oil seems a little bit low or whatever, uh, you can come up. And after the band plays this first song, uh, you're welcome to be dismissed. And, and those of you that want prayer, the, the, the altars are open. <laughs> 